The top stories tonight in Y News. The Bureau of Immigration conducts profiling in biometrics for the rescued workers from the illegal Philippine offshore gaming operator or Pogo in Porac, Pampanga. The Regional Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council reports nearly 1.5 million pesos in agricultural damage due to Mount Kondon's activity. The government is now looking into the declared assets and potential issues on tax obligations of embattled Bamban Tarlac Mayor Alice Guo. And we will discover why Israel conducted airstrike with United States-made weapon on United Nations-run school in central Gaza. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, the 7th of June, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Mavian Dog. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Kathy Navarro. First in the news, an economist believes that reducing the tariffs imposed on rice and coal would have a positive effect on the country's economy. However, it must be ensured that the benefits of the tariff cuts are felt by the citizens, especially in the prices of essential goods in the market. Nel Maribohok explains why. Reducing the tariffs imposed on rice, coal, and other agricultural products could have a positive impact on the country's economy. This is if the good results are reflected in the markets themselves. Where consumers will feel the decrease in the prices of some products, especially rice. According to Chief Economist Michael Ricafort, the 20% reduction in the tariff rate on imported rice, lowering it from 35% to 15%, is significant because it will allow allow the government to control the rising inflation rate. Makatulong sa inflation yan kasi rice accounts for nearly 9% of the inflation basket. So kung bababa ng 20% yung imported na rice, hindi syempre, ibang usapan din local, din naman apektado yung local doon. Based on the calculations of the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA, the price of rice could decrease by 6 to 7 pesos per kilo if the said tariff costs are implemented. However, according to Rica Fort, the influx of rice imports should not coincide with the harvest season in the country because this would have a negative effect on local farmers. So, siyempre, sa merkado, pag pinaghalo-halo mo yung parang important at local, bababa yung overall price. No, may competition, di ba? O sabi, mas mura yung important. So, may price pressure. Kasi yung magsasaka natin, di ba, eh, maaring mabarat na naman sila sa pagdating siya, ano, so farm gate, di ba? Ibababa din yung pagbili sa kanila ng palay. Rico Ford also said controlling inflation is also the reason why the tariff on coal for power plants was reduced. Kung mababa yung cost dahil ano, mababa yung import tariff, eh, mababa yung presyo din ng kuryente. Hindi kailangan magpasa na mas mataas ang presyo sa mga consumer. Ayun yun lang, ma mamamanage si mabuti yung eh. An executive order detailing the new tariff program of the Marcos administration is expected to be issued by Malacanang. This will include the tariffs imposed on various agricultural products. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Bureau of Immigration conducted profiling and biometrics today for the rescued workers from the illegal Philippine offshore gaming operator or POGO in Porac, Pampanga. The number of kidnapping victims who approached authorities also increased. Last night, a man was heard shouting inside the said compound and was rescued by the police securing the area. Ryan Lakanlali details why. 
Today, June 7, 159 foreign Pogo workers who were apprehended in Porak, Pampanga were subjected to profiling. Each foreign national went through biometrics for identification. This is because none of them could present documents to the authorities. Ongoing na po yung tinatawag nating immigration administrative in, uh, biometrics. In preparation po yan doon sa kanilang inquest. Uh, lahat po ng mga foreign nationals na nandito, wala hong may pakita mga dokumento. After profiling and biometrics, the foreigners will undergo inquest proceeding due to immigration violations. Lahat po ng mga foreign nationals na nandito, wala hong may pakita mga dokumento. Kasi uh, kinakailangan mo, pagpakalat-kalat ka sa Pilipinas, maging tayo, kung nasa abroad, dala mo yung passport mo. Yan yung pagkakilanlan mo eh, na pumasok ka legally. Pag hindi mo po mapakita yan, may probable cost ng gobyerno na i-hold ka pa ng dalian at i-verify kung bakit ka nga ba nandito. So yung yung ginagawa nila ngayon, ngayon, ngayon para makita na lahat ng mga yan nandito legally. The PAOC is also confirmed the earlier statement by the Philippine National Police that an investigation is already being conducted into the connection between Lucky South 99 in Porak, Pampanga and Zunyuan Technology in Banbantarlac. May ongoing investigation tayo na merong links allegedly yung Hongcheng Zunyuan at saka yung Lucky South 99. Ongoing pa po yan. Uh, itong mga susunod na mga araw po siguro makikita natin kung sino nga ba ang tunay na may-ari sa likod nitong Lucky South 99. At mabibigla ho ang sambayan ng Pilipino kung sino nga ba talaga nasa likod. Last night, another Chinese national was found inside the compound of Lucky South 99 after a police heard the victims shouting. May nakita tayong nakatali ng sa higaan eh. Punong-puno ng pasa. Nakuha na po natin yun. Kasi may sumisigaw kagabi. So napilitan kaming pasukin. Nung pagpasok namin, nakita namin ilang araw na siyang nakatali. Kinalagan ko namin ng tali at punong-puno po siya ng pasa. Dinala namin sa ospital at ngayon nandito na po siya. According to the PAOC, after rescuing the victim, they immediately left and did not inspect the area because the search warrant had not yet been issued. Alias Peter recounted that he was locked in a room for a long time because he wanted to resign as he did not want to work as a scammer. He had been locked in the room more than 10 days. That's why he's shouting us for help. According to the PAOC, they have a total of 159 foreign nationals in their custody for a said illegal pogo. There are four kidnapped victims and they also have seven Filipinos in their custody who are victims of illegal detention. According to the PAOC, the situation is crucial now because the longer they go without a warrant and cannot enter the compound, the greater the possibility that any remaining victims inside may lose their lives. Napakahalaga, liyang araw na po ito na walang tubig, walang ilaw, baka mamaya pagpasok namin mamayang gabi or bukas pag ginalugan namin may makita kami mga katawan, sana wala. Ryan Lacanlale, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Regional Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council has reported nearly 1.5 million pesos in agricultural damage due to Mount Kanlaon's activity. Gladys Tuwabi will tell us why. Following the eruption of Mount Kanlaon, many crops were devastated and the livelihood of fisher folk and farmers were affected. As of 7 p.m. yesterday, June 6, 1,491,206 pesos in agricultural damage has been reported due to the volcano's activity. Meanwhile, 1,986 individuals and 572 families were affected in Negros Occidental, of which 280 families or 1,138 individuals remain in the evacuation centers.
While local government units understand the evacuees, officials ask the affected residents to be more patient while they try to accommodate their needs. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad, Israel airstrike that was conducted with United States made weapon on a United Nations front school in central Gaza has killed dozens of people. Early Brionis details why. A tragic incident in the Nuzerat refugee camp, where a school run by the United Nations Relief and Work Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East that was housing 6,000 displaced people and got damaged by an Israeli airstrike. Authorities reported that the attack on the facility resulted in at least 40 deaths. According to Israeli military spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, the strike targeted a Hamas compound that was allegedly operating within the school. United Nations Relief and Work Agency Commissioner General Philip Lazzarini reported that the school was struck by at least three missiles, which penetrated the three-story building, severely impacting the facility, its yard, and the surrounding area. It's been confirmed that the munitions used in the strike were U.S.-made GVU-39 small-diameter bombs. In related news, Israel's Defense Minister Yuav Gallant announced on Wednesday, June 5, that the military offensive in Gaza will persist, despite ongoing attempts to negotiate a ceasefire and secure the release of hostages held by Hamas. Early Briones, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The United States has been urging China to attend a peace summit on Ukraine scheduled for June 15 to 16 in Switzerland, according to a U.S. State Department spokesperson on Thursday, June 6. Despite China's reluctance due to Russia's exclusion, the U.S. stresses the importance of China's involvement. Kyiv has extended invitations to more than 100 countries to discuss President Volodymyr Zelensky's peace plan aimed at ending the full-scale Russian invasion that began in February 2022. Russia, with whom China maintains close ties, has not been invited to the summit. A State Department spokesperson emphasized Ch that China should prevent its companies from supporting Russia's defense industry, stating this would be even more helpful. China has indicated it will stay away from the summit, citing the need for both warring sides to be present for any meaningful peace conference. Moscow has dismissed the idea of a summit without its participation as pointless, while Ukraine has accused Moscow of attempting to, to disrupt the conference. The U.S., alongside the European Union, has previously communicated to China that its firm face a choice between doing business with the U.S. and EU economies or supplying Russia with dual-use dual goods. A Boeing Starliner capsule carrying NASA astronauts has successfully docked with the International Space Station for the first time on Thursday, June 6. This milestone comes after overwhelming several challenges that affected its propulsion system. The spaceship launched from Florida on Wednesday, June 5, after years of delays, safety concerns, and two aborted launch attempts. On board were astronauts Bush Wilmore and Sonny Williams, both former Navy test pilots, marking them as the first group to pilot the Starliner. Boeing and NASA are hopeful that the Starliner will soon become the regular mode of transportation to the ISS. The reason and those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. Amid controversies hounding the identity of embattled Bamban Tarlac Mayor Alice Guo, the government is now looking into her declared assets and potential issues on tax obligations. Harleen Delgado's report will tell us why. 
The Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, will probe the properties and companies of Bambantarlac Mayor Alice Guo. This as Senate Deputy Minority Leader Rison Tiveros revealed inconsistencies in her statements of assets, liabilities, and net worth, or sal ends. In a statement, BIR Commissioner Romeo Lumagi Jr. says he has ordered the agency to fully cooperate with the Senate investigation and look into the names of individuals and entities linked to Guo and their accumulated wealth. Lumagi explains if the income declared with the BIR does not match with the value of properties, criminal cases for tax evasion will be filed against Guo and her conspirators. The BIR chief assures they will follow due process in the investigation, adding that they also welcome all informants who could help in auditing the Bamban mayor and her companies. For her part, Honteveros, who chairs the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations and Gender Equality Investigating Guo, extends her gratitude to government agencies for their initiative to investigate the issue. The lawmaker says she is no longer surprised by the potential tax evasion case of Guo, saying that all documents bearing her name, from her birth certificate up to her cell ends, are all questionable. The opposition senator assures that her panel is ready to cooperate with the BIR in its investigation. She further advises Guo to come clean and tell the truth before it's too late. Senator Sherwin Gachalian also commends the BIR for launching an inquiry into Guo's companies to determine their liabilities to the government. He notes that the discrepancies in the declared income of Guo's companies and her assets and investments are already an indication of undeclared external sources in their tax returns. Guo's camp has yet to comment on the matter. The Senate committee will hold a briefing with the Anti-Money Laundering Council to delve into the illegal revenue streams of the raided Pogo Hub in Bamban before calling for another Senate hearing on the issue. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A group of Philippine scientists say corals in Escoto Shoal almost 100% dead. This after they conduct marine scientific survey in the particular area of the West Philippine Sea. Ashray Kadaban Jr. explains why. Thermal stress that may be related to climate change is the primary culprit in the death of corals in the West Philippine Sea, particularly in Escoda Shoal. Marine and biology experts explain this as they conduct scientific survey in disputed waters. Extensively within that area, almost 100% na rin ng mga corals ang namatay. At iba-ibang stages, pero ang pinakamalawak pa rin na stage ay yung stage na either puting-puti na yung mga corals or covered na sila in brown or nag-crumble down na talaga sila, basag-basag na sila. I predict na a majority or almost all of the shallow water ng Escoda Shoal are now dead, uh, yung mga corals. With the depleting corals, Experts added that most of the fishes are gone and only few species were left in Guscoda Shoal. This, they reckon, poses threat to the food supply and livelihood of Filipinos. Supposedly, the coral reefs that host the highest number of species per unit area across the entire planet, mas marami pa sa rainforest, pero ito ngayon namamatay na. And ang nakita namin ng mga isda na natira na lang ay yung mga isda na lang na nabubuhay because they can eat the algae. Tawag na mga herbivores. The scientists call for active support in monitoring of West Philippine Sea to help corals recover from thermal stress and crumbling down of entire structures. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with the word of God, like giving glory to God. From the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also, I also will keep the word, I will also from, the, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. And those are the reasons behind the news, June 7, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Kathy Navarro, live from Qatar. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Navian Dog, live from Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God. <laughs>